Hi everyone and welcome to the Render Media Vlog where we talk everything business and marketing. Today we have the managing partner from Hyper Social, Rob LaRusso. Rob, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here, Mike. So Rob, tell me all about Hyper Social. So Hyper Social is a social media marketing company. Uh, we handle everything from content creation to content distribution throughout all social media platforms. Now you're a leader in the social media industry. Tell me where do you think things are heading for social? Well, currently we're looking at social media platforms like Instagram that act as entertainment sources for people across the world. Like the television boom in the 60s when NBC and CBS started their rise, you're starting to see Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube be the platforms people go to to be entertained on a constant basis. And now you have a lot of clients of yours that are doing social media. Sure. What are some of their goals? Uh, in a lot of ways, you know, people just want to get their brand message out there and it's very important to utilize social media to do so. I mean, people are there, uh, there's ways that you can, you know, target people who are you know, looking after certain content, utilize certain content strategies to then get your message across to them when they're already looking for content that you can produce for them. And now, what are some of the exercises you guys do to achieve that? Well, I mean, one of our main objectives is to qualify clients' buyer personas. So find who they want to speak to. So, you know, let's say you're a restaurant. What's your clientele like? What are the age ranges? You know, what are they normally into? And then we find, you know, that range and we create content that's tailor-made just for those people. And what sort of content do you use to get exposure for your clients online? Well, nowadays, if you're not doing any video content, uh, you're definitely falling behind. Um, but we do like to create, uh, you know, branded pieces as well from a graphic standpoint. One of the things I've noticed too with social media marketing companies, even at the highest level, uh, there's too much curated content. They create their own noise within their own platforms. So what we try to do is create an entire experience for the brands that we work with. So everything flows together. Even something as simple as choosing the right cover on a video so it matches the rest of the content throughout. That's something we look to do is to create a brand experience across all platforms. So now tell me, I'm a new client of yours. I'm walking into your office. How do you go about starting a social media strategy for your clients? Well, first I need to find out what your goals are. So, you know, we bring you into our office. Uh, we're pretty famous at this point for our whiteboard strategies when we start people off. So I need to find out more about you, your company, what your goals are, where you've been, where you see yourself going. And then we start the process from there. At the end of the day, there's so many strategies that we could implement and they're based on what our clients want to achieve. And speaking of achieving results for your clients, can you give me a case study of some of the results you've achieved for your clients? Well, sure. There was, uh, we worked with a company recently, New Maj Trading. Uh, we ran a national campaign uh, where we gave away a trip for two to Italy. And throughout that, you know, this is a, a client that didn't really have the you know, largest you know, viewership on their social media platforms. You know, we were looking at followers in the you know, 80 to 120 range. Uh, so we were able to help them achieve their goals utilizing their partner, uh, Cali Potuna in Italy. So uh, with some of the videos that we created and graphics, we were able to really ramp up you know, the amount of people they could now speak to organically once the contest was done. We had an insane engagement. Um, I think our goal was about 200 contest entrants. We got to near 1,000 wow. throughout the duration of the two months. So we really, uh, we really hit a home run. So tell me, Rob, social media is a lot of different things to a lot of different sure. people. What do you think of when you think social media? So a lot of the things I think about social media involve the users in and of themselves. So I find that social media has become extremely attached to the way people live their lives every day. You know, people don't even act in a lot of ways in the outside world without posting it on social media first. Instagram, Facebook, these are all part of the actual experience people have when they're out and about in the world. You know, you're at a restaurant, you take a picture of your meal. You're at a Jays game, you know, you're videotaping that first pitch to let people know that you're there. So a lot of the things I think about social media involve, you know, the people and how they use it. On the business side of things, I see it as a great way for businesses to target their target audience, utilizing certain tactics. So finding, you know, certain likes that their likes and behaviors, sorry, that their potential clients could have, you know, maybe utilizing some content extension strategies. So something we do is we definitely promote advertising yourself through posts. So on social media, uh, your platform, you're basically, you are restricted to your audience unless you boost a post that way. So we would utilize strategies to, uh, you know, target the people who are posting content in certain places geographically and or have certain likes or behaviors. So it definitely is double-edged for me. And now social media has changed a lot since the advent of social media. Sure. 
Why do you think social media was even created in the first place? And where do you think things are going? If you believe that movie, The Social Network, is a way for Mark Zuckerberg to get girls. That's why Facebook was created. I don't know much about MySpace Tom either. Um, I wasn't really into social media then. But I remember I was living in Calgary when Facebook really... So I had moved from Ontario to Alberta. And it was a great way for me to stay connected with my family. Uh, while I was out there and you know you looked at the engagement then like you'd put a picture I'd have pictures of mountains I'd get one like maybe not a comment but someone would tell me on the phone that they saw my picture on Facebook now people know to comment they know to like so you know if I have a picture of a chocolate sundae I mean, shouldn't be eating but I do I'll get 60 likes and a bunch of comments I'd like those <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course man <laughs> yeah <laughs> everyone loves food so the, there's the big three uh, in social media there's food there's babies and there's puppies. So if you have one of those three things in an image, chances are you're going to get a lot of attention from your audience. So Rob's telling me is I need to get a puppy, folks. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, Rob, HyperSocial is doing great. You guys are growing fast. What can we look out for the future of HyperSocial? So I think what, what I'm really most looking forward to is just bigger projects and greater content uh, creation on our end. Uh, we're really moving into video uh, and rich you know, content and rich graphics. And another thing I'm really excited about is some of the consulting gigs. Uh, I've been able to work with some great brands and work with even some of their internal marketing departments to really help you know, their internal marketing teams explore social media. So one of the problems larger companies fall into is they've had a certain way of doing things for so long. And where an outsourced solution like myself comes into play is I come in with a fresh set of eyes to the brand, a fresh set of eyes to how to market, and it kind of helps them, you know, maybe jolt them a little bit to get them out of their, you know, set ways, and then we can move forward with a really exciting idea. So Rob, you had mentioned that video is very important for social sure. media now. Describe to me why video is, is so important, it's getting all the traction and engagement. To go back to what I said before, uh, some of these social media platforms give you uh, a boost in how many people you'll see. So uh, you know, you'll hear a lot of numbers being thrown around, but chances are if you put a picture out on social media, uh, you'll maybe reach 20% of your audience if you're really lucky. And especially if you're a business, 20% is great. Um, on the video side of things though, you do get a bit of a boost, especially if you upload directly to a platform. So again, like Facebook really, 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 I can't stress enough how much they give businesses a boost when you put videos directly on Facebook. They will, you know, then you jump up, you know, another like 20% to 40%, 45%. If you're utilizing the stories in Instagram, that gives you another boost as well and the chance to send people to your platform. So video content is where it's at to how to get uh, a boost on social media. I mean, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now tell me about di posting directly to social media. I heard that now using scheduling softwares sure. are actually not performing as well because there's an algorithm that is being recognized on these social platforms that can tell when you're scheduling from something, say like Hootsuite. Sure. Is that true? And, and how does that work? So again, to say exactly how it works is, you know, maybe not something I, I wouldn't be privy to why Facebook does certain things, why LinkedIn does certain things. But I do know that, you know, maybe when people do use scheduling software, they're using more curated content. That's a big issue now too for companies, the difference between curated and created content. So curated content is something they'll pull from someone else. You know, it could be a blog that pertains to their business, but someone else created it. So that's a blog that's already been shared so many times around. So then there's the created content that's unique. So there seems to be a digital timestamp that's you know attached to these pieces of content. And if you are doing, you know, if you're creating your own content, you do see a boost in engagement. And especially when you schedule it directly through Facebook and you know, setting drafts and Instagram and notes to yourself. So not using Hootsuite and taking the easy way out to schedule is the, the way to go to get more engagement. So Rob, you work with lots of different companies from small to large size enterprises. Sure. Tell me what is the perfect frequency of posting on social media for say a small business? So at the end of the day, you want quality over quantity. Uh, so a lot of the businesses I work with, three, four, five times a week, depending on what their content goals are. So you know, if you only have this X amount of budget but you want to do video, then put it into video. You know, there's you know distribution strategies we could use to get that one post out to more people. So the how much you should post, there is, you know, I would say minimum of three, four times a week. You could post twice a day, depending on what your goals are. So at the end of the day, how often you should post depends on what your goals are. You know, tell me what your goals are and I'll tell you how often you want to post. There's no one answer. That's great to know. Thanks. And I'll see you're a large company. Sure. 
Should your frequency change or should you still have the same frequency? So again, this goes back to quality over quantity. Now, if you are a larger company, you could probably, you know, spend a lot of your budget into creating like incredible 30 second clips, right? Utilize video and great production to get your brand message out there and then utilize graphic strategies in and around that. For example, have you ever seen like the mosaics in, in Instagram? That's right. Where you see like six like tiled, you know, graphical images. So that takes a designer a lot of time to do, right? So technically, that's a single post, but the algorithm, depending on the hashtags you use, will see that as six different posts. So again, the posting strategy is, now that you're seeing different artwork being done, the how often isn't really as important as how well. That's actually very fascinating because I see the mosaics, I'm sure a lot of the viewers also wonder how those are created. So can you maybe describe like the process in creating a mosaic? So I'm bringing you in behind the curtain now. Okay, so I mean a lot of times this is created in Photoshop. So you're looking at a grid created on top of a graphical image. You know, you should know if you're you know, worth any of your social media salt, the size of a social media post. So you should know what your grid needs to be, whether it's six tile or nine tile. You'd create an image within that. So. You know, for all you people out there, you know, you do the math here uh, to get what that would be for six or nine. You create an image within that, you add the grid, and then you start popping them out. And now is there a certain like place you have to start the grid? Because, you know, populates an Instagram. So basically you would start with your, I guess your bottom right. I'm trying to think of it now. Yeah. So whatever the bottom right of the image is, that's what you start with. So there is you, like... There's a skill to it, sure. But I mean, it's pretty, anyone who's ever played like the tile game or like the Simpsons tile game where you got to move puzzle pieces around, you'll be able to figure out how to get your poster in there. And now that's great content. Sure. What absolutely. is some other great static content uh, that you can use on Instagram? So I'm a big fan of, you know, quotes, for example, and have and give finding something that someone else has said about, you know, what you're doing. So again, if you are, let's say a marketer like Render Media, for example. So if you find quotes from people who discuss marketing, and the importance of marketing or marketing that they've done, other businesses, to share that just to become a thought leader, that's a great piece of static content. Now video content, where do you think the focus should be with small businesses creating video content? Uh, the focus should be on you. So, I mean, think about like when you watch television, you'd watch commercials, you know? I mean, someone like me would take the clicker and try to like switch around, right? But what did you see in commercials back in the day? You saw people. So let's focus on you. Um, you know, your commercials, or even social media posts now act as commercials. So you'll notice every five swipe ups, you'll see a sponsored post, right? So act like a commercial. Show yourself, show the people in your neighborhood who are you know, supporting your business, and tell people why they should support you too by showing the great services you offer. Now you make, you make another great point, Rob. You talk about swiping up, where it sure. tends to be that higher quality content, right. those advertisements. Why do you think it's important to maintain high quality content on social, if you even believe that at all? Well, I mean, there's so much noise out there. So there's a lot of content on social. So you have to fight with, you know, people's like relatives, people's friends, you know, their friends. You have to fight a lot of noise really on social media. So you need to stand out. And the only way to do that is quality. Or I guess you could pull what Leon's used to do on television ads and just be really, really bad at stuff. And then that will get attention. But you just need to stand out. There's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of people fighting for that attention in that space and you just need to stand out with some quality content. So standing out is key. Absolutely. And that doesn't matter whether it's high quality or not, or sure. is high quality content standing out? High quality will always help you stand out, absolutely. Whether it's graphically, you need to grab people's attention, you know, with a video, maybe, you know, you start with like a nice sound or whatever to kick start people's eyes, right? Because like a sound will jolt you as you scroll through. Um, yeah, there's little strategies you can, you know, pull, you know, as a marketer that will help you stand out on social media. Rob, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks, Mike. And I hope I get to come here again soon. This is so much fun. Thanks. We will definitely have you back. Thanks, Mike. Everyone, Rob LaRusso from Hypersocial. Tune in next time.